Power 106, LA's number one for hip hop. It's the all new Power Mornings. I'm Letty. Got my guy Greg C in here with what me. Up? And I'm so happy to finally, after years, years <laughs> of DMing her and texting her oh. and stalking her oh. and going to the valley where she lives and being like, Snow, come on, Power 106. Snow, yeah. the product is here. Oh my yeah. gosh. Hi, thank Snow. you. Thank you for the dramatic <laughs> fucking. First of all, I came in with flowers. So you know this bitch. You know yeah, she you ain't begging me. You know she wasn't begging me. <laughs> No, you should have brought me serenata is really what I was waiting for yeah. so you can make me feel like a baddie but okay look it's no. it feels so good to have you in here it's been a long super long overdue I think we've missed each other a lot mm-hmm. things like our timetables of just what we've been doing in our careers have mm-hmm. missed I was out of radio for a long time now you're going there <laughs> it's crazy because in LA I think the funniest thing about Los Angeles is like when they say the world is small it's so much smaller in Los Angeles you mm-hmm. know someone that's besties and this and that with somebody else and you gotta maneuver in that same sense but look we're here we're here and I don't think I've ever even though respecting boundaries and friendships and enemies yeah. and everything I feel like I've always been very like respectful and been very like yeah. you know what I mean like it ain't, it ain't nothing it's just you you can you can maneuver without getting involved in this stuff because i'm not honestly i'm not from la you know like yeah. i don't I, I had to learn how to like you know move around i'm norcal socal but i Mexico. think we own you <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you i, I mean we, look i'm wearing this it's honorary got the little the little lakers stuff or whatever Ooh. like i wasn't a very much of a basketball fan but right. you know we out here I'm, I'm, if I got it's, it's the vibe this is really mm-hmm. nice though where's thank it from? you reconstruct on melrose my boy miggy Mexican, he take he ups he upcycles clothes, makes a lot of like vintage stuff into like cool one of one of pieces and yeah. stuff. I love that. What's awesome about you, Snow, is no one has your style at all. Like you always you. stay ahead of that. You always have like the Snow the product look. It's always gonna be some big ass shoes. Which by the way, <laughs> I is it Spice Girls vibes? Because it's Spice Girls vibes for me when we're growing mm-hmm. up. Like mm-hmm. those big shoes, the boots, the big chunky boots. You yeah. got that. You always got a dope sweater. Thank you. Yes, and you always got the the hair. Thank the you. The hair is always popping. Hey, man, we out here, you know? Do, I, you, do you look, are you intentionally like that with your closet or what kind of fits your style? How do you get into that? I, I'm i very the vibe, you know? So yeah. it's like if I walk into a store, I'm like the fastest shopper. I can go to a mall and I can go to every store and I literally walk in, I scan and I'm like, I like that. And I grab it. Yeah. And if I like it a lot, I'll grab it in every color because I'm, obsessive compulsive <laughs> once i like something i like i'm dead I need more. I need yeah, more. I'm like, bro yeah. you know like in high school i like liked overalls i owned overalls in every fucking color literally people were like we want to see your body and i'm like i want to wear overalls yeah. so what's up but anyway um <laughs> that's how it is yeah. i just like what i like i'm very sure about it and if i'm not sure about it i don't do it yeah that's you it. know what's wild is sometimes either stuff happens for us or it doesn't happen for us because it's, it's that weird I guess back and forth with God of like wait and I'm gonna give it to you when you need it and I think there was a lot of wait for you but I mm-hmm. think this is the perfect time to be Snow the Product especially with the crossover of genres mm-hmm. with Spanish and English with rap just meshing into whatever the Latin trap scene is slash pop urbano all yes. of that stuff right Absolutely. and you're right there in the middle of it nobody is you and it's almost like as if you were made for this particular time exactly you know thank you but also I think it takes someone as like into the culture and smart as you and I'm not mm-hmm. just sitting here kissing your ass or anything like really I feel mm-hmm. like even when we used to talk on that little app or whatever yeah. like I would hear you like explain things about hip hop or about right. culture or whatever and you're always like really on point with mm-hmm. it so to hear you describe it as that is like bro like it's like that perfect time though you, you're right yeah. you know what I mean like like you're right and and even just personally I, I've said it before like I don't think I would have been able to handle social media or criticism or you know I don't think I was fully myself I don't think you know so many things about me right. needed to be exactly at the right moment for me to feel how I feel right now which is very happy with mm-hmm. with the success that has come from this but also with the comfort of doing it on my own terms and independently fully from home I could do whatever I want and that right. feels awesome to me you know you know what's yeah. crazy too is like the Latin Grammys just happen and sometimes God shows you the confirmations yeah. mm-hmm. because you've been to the Latin Grammys before nominated mm-hmm. before but mm-hmm. you were there this past week I was at freaking Raider like you, I saw you at the Raider Stadium yeah that's kind of like yeah you're supposed to be here no yeah. one else was as you did a music video there so. bro I thought it was just like some light work like they were like oh yeah there's this Raider event so I show up bro they gave me a jersey they had me in the middle of it they were having me shooting a music video the Raiders hit me up themselves like Ooh. a ticket 
tickets, like mad stuff. Wow. I'm just like, bro, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I've never crazy. been to a Raider game, but I've been a Raider fan my whole life. Like, re- really, I just couldn't afford it. And then, yeah. and then it was just timing or whatever. But now it's like, bro, talk about things just working themselves yeah. out. And if I ever lost a little bit of faith, trust me, I got it right yeah. now because I'm just happy. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here and I'm happy for everything that is happening with the universe because to be honest, it's good. Yeah. Life's good. Seeing the people that you did at Latin Grammys, you know, I saw those that, that one carousel you did, like everyone on this photo I want to collab with. Yeah. Did it trip you out that these people, kn- they want to collab with you? Like, forget yeah. what you want. Forget your vision board. Yeah. Their, like, bucket list is Snow the Product. Yeah. You're I, the epitome of making it for a lot of artists. I think I'm a I'm a cool cross section like yeah. like cross section for for between you know Mexico or Latin America mm-hmm. too and United States. I feel like as much as there could be a lot of arguments, and I'm sure we'll talk about this more on your podcast yeah. about like the Mexican American dilemma yeah. right that yeah. we have going on, especially in rap and in music or whatever. But then you think about Latin America and you think about other countries and Spanish speaking countries and stuff like that. And it's like yeah. to a lot of them, they've been watching me since the since back then, since yeah. I was dropping certain yeah. music. So to them, yeah. they're like, yo, like you've been doing it like in the US, you know? So when I go over there, that respect is there. Even if some of them got, bro, some of them got 30 million listeners and you're just like, I'm not as famous yeah. as you. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. but you're that girl. Like we mm-hmm. watched you growing up. Like you're that girl. And I'm just like, that's wild because at that moment I thought, I was making no impact. Yeah. And little did I know some kid in another country was watching me and being like, yo, I want to be like her. And now they've surpassed me, but that level of respect is still there. Yep. To me, it's fucking, it's amazing. Sorry, yeah. I don't want to cuss. It's a, I've seen you from waste of time till now, and you are doing amazing. Yeah. Thank you amazing. so much. Amazing. Thank Your you. Your growth is just beautiful. I love yeah. it. Thank you. And you know yeah. one thing about waste of time, for example, is that I literally made that song intentionally. Like, I was like, I want to... I was at a place where everybody knew me for aggressive rap. You know that. Everybody knew me for like really rapping like a lot or whatever. And I was like, I want to make a song where it can be for the girls because obviously I... I I'm a girl and I sing and I've been in relationships and I'm a cancer, so I'm emotional. And I was like, I want to make a song like that, but I want to intertwine the fact that my brother and I shoot our own music videos. Yeah. I want the video to have something to do with the the song. I want everything from scratch. Yeah. And we did it in my living room, recorded the song super quick. And when, when I dropped that song, something about it just felt so like... Right away, my fan base didn't get it. There was a yeah. lot of people that were like, this ain't it. Right. And like, you know, yeah. the video, what, what happened, blah, blah, blah. But people didn't realize how deep it went. Yeah. That's my baby's dad. That mm-hmm. That's a song about, you know, wasting time. I'm in a restaurant. Who hasn't been in a breakup? Yeah. In that specific situation, talking to your significant other. And then throw in the fact that I am really rapping fast. I'm just yeah. doing it a little singy so you get it. Yeah. And now so many girls are like, that's when I that's discovered it. you. And I'm like, hey, that's tight. Um, yeah, welcome to the club because yeah. we've been here. <laughs> Being intentional is very, very important. Snow, how yeah. was it even asking Baby Daddy to be a part of it? Because I remember that video and him just like, he's even putting his cool suave. Like, I know when he's had a snow, but maybe I could get, maybe I could get a snow fan off of this. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he did. He definitely uh, racked up a few a few of my fans. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he definitely got a got him. Um, yeah. Good for him. Good for good yeah. for them. Um, but yeah, I think um, that that's a testament to how. I mean, I've I've been cool. I'm cool with all my yeah. exes. Like I'm I'm cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, just because things don't work out or whatever. Like we have a son. We have to co-parent. I'm an adult as much as I could be. Snow the product, drinking tequila on stage. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still an adult, and I'm I think I'm a good good adult. So yeah. um, it was cool. He 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 had no problem. He does feel like sometimes that did hate on his game because people think ask him if he's a waste of time, uh. and I'm like. Ooh, you know, like you're like yeah. a bad Yelp review, bro, because <laughs> no, you literally no, no, no. were like, but I was, this <laughs> about this one man. No, but I didn't write that song about him, mm-hmm. so that's why he knew he knew who yeah. I wrote the song about. So he he was fine with it. He doesn't care. And plus, I have let some girls know. Don't worry, the song's not about him. Go mm-hmm. ahead, he's yeah, yeah it's thing, not. Girl. It's fine. We're co-parenting. We're not right. even thinking about each other and anymore. Then they hit like me up afterwards, and they're like, "You lied." <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Snow, you said it, and I don't believe it. I just can't believe it. As, you're a cancer, mm-hmm. and you said you're cool are your exes. That's weird for me. I'm, and I don't know if it's me the way that I am, but I just don't think that I can be cool with my exes like that. What is it about you that can be that cool, calm, and collected with someone that you had a relationship with, like you have something in the past with? That I know what to expect once we break up. What is that? It's going to be cool for a little bit. Then they're going to realize the L they took, so they're going to get dramatic. It's going to get crazy. Things are going to wild out for a little yeah. bit, but as long as I hold on... 
they'll come back around and it'll all be cool because at the at the end of the day I know what I do in a relationship. I'm not I'm not in a relationship to waste time or to do anything. If I yeah. if I'm not at the right time to get in a relationship, I don't get in one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like I give it my all. I try my best. I really aim for you know whatever I can and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out but so even though people are gonna go through human emotions yeah at you the, are too though yeah, yeah 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 me too but but at the end of the day we'll come to a resolution where it's like bro like you know the relationship wasn't you know what I mean like mm-hmm. you know I'm not a bad person mm-hmm. so if you're not a bad person things will get back to normal and you'll be like okay cool so we're cool, you yeah, know? It didn't yeah. work out. Even though you did some messed up things yeah, that, um, during yeah. the breakup. But you know what? I'm going I'm to take that L and I'm going to keep it pushing because I, I know what I'm worth and I know where I'm going. And, and I feel like it's got to hurt. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. Isn't it the future? Like once I've had you, you're, uh, you're always a part of my, what is it? You're always part of my roster, essentially. Oh, but if I say oh, that, no. see, she look, it sounds that. like what you're saying. <laughs> but if I say that, that's gonna sound no, I, no. <laughs> I least, mean, some, I guess, like if you really still you're just care always about, be, I'm, I'm there for you. Yeah, I'm always gonna be there for you. Exactly. You're always gonna mean something to me. Yeah, but then they're nah, not always. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, all right, I'm, I mean, I'm there for you. Don't be calling me in the middle of the night type stuff. Like yeah. I'm busy because I could have moved on already, and you might be messing things up for me. But look, shout out to Snow <laughs> the Product. <laughs> shout out to Snow the Product. Look, one song we play a lot is your flip on the Kitty, and you'll big yes. up to our guy, just incredible. I was talking to my guy George about it, and he said that you did that like in 15 minutes. You wrote it, and you took like a one take type of deal. Do mm. you get surprised at how surprised other people get? at your work ethic this comes too easy snow <laughs> i do get surprised because i have anxiety mm-hmm. so i think in double time right so i if i if there was an awkward pause that might have been one second i think it was like five minutes was, yeah, so to yeah. me when i'm on the spot i feel like everything's like so drastic and mm-hmm. like i'm like really stressed out and then when i come out and they're like oh that was 15 minutes i'm like what that felt like three hours like yeah. I was failing in front of everyone mm. so I do get surprised because I guess I just don't realize that um, my anxiety just affects me more than I think but yeah. Uh, no yeah that that was super good shout out Just Incredible I want to work with him again I know I know we haven't gotten the chance to but um, definitely super dope dude and that was yeah. a f- that was that was definitely a, a underhanded uh, pitch that he threw at me that, that I, I was no, and you killed it you knocked that yeah. out the park <laughs> he said you uh, made it in English and Spanish yeah. yeah that's wild yeah. that is amazing yeah, yeah. we have a couple other things we are working on that i think are also super amazing but um i i don't know man i think i'm i'm that artist like you know i've mm-hmm. been around forever and i don't think i always get opportunities like mm-hmm. sometimes when people get like a dope opportunity they always hand it off to like oh well this is my boy's artist or like right. this is a guy that i know from whatever so everybody's always doing that like nepotism type stuff or like their homies yeah. the, the boys they the good old boy stuff yeah, yeah but whenever people do give an opportunity to the person that should have it mm-hmm. that's when you really get the results because that person deserves it and that person should have it and i think that was one of those moments where it's like they threw around a lot of names but it's like bro when you're really thinking of bilingual artists that's in la that's gonna Mm -hmm. be able to do this and that is a real bad bunny fan i'm like it was me so thank you that was a real moment that was important and i'm very very grateful for for him being a a real one yeah and we stay running that but also like that leads up to something to celebrate with this new soundtrack that dropped the Wakanda for the Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Hey. You've been quiet about being on it, Snow, but when <laughs> I saw you on it on the Vida song, you and E40, if feels like it's necessary it's a part of that even just marvel having their first latino like hero like that Mm -hmm. with someone like the noche huerta who is playing an indigenous uh mayan character as namor in the film being a part of that how does that even come together for you snow (laughs) bro <laughs> that's <laughs> the, crazy honestly the universe dude like i'm telling you because i already like i happen to be going to mexico city well, first mm-hmm. of all this year i've been i've damn near living in the mexico city <laughs> so i was in mexico city and um you know I, my manager was like yo there's this opportunity i'm not gonna tell you what it is but if you can pull up to the studio we're gonna figure it out it's like super hush hush i was like okay bet so i pull up and um then they tell me what it is and i promise you my first words were don't tell me the Mexicans are the enemy in this in this movie <laughs> yes. because I am I do not, not want showing to be the villain up. Anymore, I, I know I'm like this is not you know what I mean because yeah. I really do care about like Mexicans and like and black brown and like how we're represented. Yeah, yeah. I care. You feel me? So I'm like, bro, I will say no to an opportunity if it turns out that like the Mexicans are like shady or something. Yeah. And they were like, no, no, they're not. Which 
I'm not gonna lie. I just saw the movie and I was a little bit like, "Hey, man, what's up?" Like, yeah. you know. But at least it all came to a resolution. Um, kind of. Kind I, of. I, one of them little comments had got me. I was like, "Hey." I was like, "Hey, they lied." I didn't me. like it. Right? I didn't like it. I felt like don't make us the antagonist. Like we, Bruh. like he had all the loyalty in the world and was protective of his, of his community, which we are but too. But he was beating girls' ass. Like, come on, not to add yeah. to the. <laughs> But she was Black Panther at the time. I mean, yeah, but still, like, bro. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go watch the movie, which you should, and listen to the soundtrack. You but know, yeah, I was yeah, a little watching nervous. that. Yeah, yeah, I was of a little course. Nervous. But I, I, at the end of the day, like, honestly, I wrote that song, um, and there was a lot of epic songs that I was like, yo, I want to be part of this. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. But then I wanted to add a bright song because I, I had heard some of the other songs that were kind of like more, you know. Um, so I was like, let me add something that's like celebratory for like our people, mm-hmm. our ancestors, our family, you know. And that's I, I wrote it. Thinking of like my dad, like what my dad would want. Cause my dad is super proud, like we're indigenous, we're yeah. Mexican. That's why I was raised how I am. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me write this like my dad would. And I didn't even hit my dad up or nothing because I don't have a very close relationship with him. But when he heard it, he was like, I want you to know I'm proud of how you wrote that. And it's I was like, so yo, beautiful yeah. snow. When I think, when I hear sign. it, I think of like Carnaval by Celia Cruz, yeah. Un Rinconcito mm-hmm. en el Cielo, because mm-hmm. you put the Rinconcito in there. Yeah. Like that's the vibe we get. And I love it because it's in a, it's, it's in a movie that has such twists and turns. And it goes from, I guess that struggle to that fight to coming out of it with a resolution. I think your song was that perfect point of, yeah. all right, life is good. Yeah. And then bringing on E40. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was he like, look, I'm, I'm going to give you with this. Or what, what was that collaboration like? With E40, that was a conversation because there was a different verse on it. And mm-hmm. I was like, look, I was like, and that's a difficult conversation to have of like, I Someone feel like this it. is this is what we should talk about. And I feel like it was dope because E-40 is a legend, bro. Yeah. And he hit me up and was like, let me know how to say, you know what I mean? Like what we trying to say, because I want to make sure that I help the situation because he knew he like, obviously what's been going on in LA and like yeah. a lot of these conversations and stuff. So this was a real thing of like, even though this is going for Marvel, for Disney, this is a real big thing. That's mm-hmm. like, you know, also we got to live in this still. We yeah. are in the U.S. and that Mexican-American uh, experience has to be explained and we have to be respectful of certain things and also know where we're going with it, you know? Yeah. So it was really dope to have that convo and it really kind of like elevated me and made me feel like, yo, I can have these dope-ass convos with like legends. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I'm here. I'm one of them, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so it, it's dope. I feel like to me, it's a dream come true. I'm, I'm excited. Honestly, the reason I haven't talked about it so much is because I think I just haven't really like taking it in but snow it's so good yeah. I know. it's so I know. good <laughs> i hit that one of when he's underwater and like he's showing the girl her shit like the la brisa song and then it's yours mm-hmm. and it's like those two are the standouts of that of that soundtrack album and i think people don't understand like how important soundtracks album or like the score of a movie is yeah. and you're gonna be that for generations to come because black panther is not gonna go away at any time soon thank and you just know the product Thank you. Like that's that, and I and it might be like the slight work, like you said. Like you're, if someone says it was like a second for you, it's five minutes. This is very much so Mm -hmm. the five minutes. This is like the full on. Like this speaks for itself. Yeah, you had that with with Hamilton. Yeah, you know, this is not new to you. Yeah, that's some Grammy shit, Snow. Yeah. Yeah, that's That's big. Like, I think it's crazy because, again, there are some accolades and it trips me out. Like you talk about like the Latin Grammys and the Latin artists and how they have like five billion listeners. And here we are trying to make it in something like hip hop and like fighting and and suffering and like in the, hey, please listen to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Understanding that you're still down to give that fight, even though there's so much already that you've done. Yeah. That takes that like retrospect into like wow this is me there's no one else like me snow there's no one else like you yeah i that was a that was a thing i had to really understand Mm -hmm. and i like i said i don't think i should have ever blown up or gotten a lot of attention until Mm -hmm. i was able to walk in my own you know purpose Mm -hmm. in my own situation of being able to be like I'm not in competition with anybody. You know yeah, what I mean? Nobody. Like, 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 for example, I posted with, with Becky G or whatever, and, like, me and Becky, like, have been able to talk privately yeah. without people even knowing that we yeah, know each yeah. other. Same thing as, like, with Lauren. Like, now that we're dropping a song and a video, people are like, oh, wow, why are you guys so so good friends? And it's, like, because we really are talking because for a long time I didn't have peers that I could talk to. Yeah. It's hard to talk to people that understand my situation because I am one of the only, like, Mexican-American artists that is 
rapping and 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 doing the lane that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's been Chicano rap. Of course, there's yeah, been yeah. other artists. Of course, I'm not taking away from anyone, but I'm just saying I'm in a very specific place, especially being queer and like a lot of the mm. communities that I represent is just so much and so many responsibilities and so much to be careful with because yeah. I want to make sure I don't affect anybody negatively. So it's been hard. So, you know, I get my queer friends, I get my Mexican friends, I get my different friends and I kind of try to piece together who the hell I am, you know, and I'm glad that I'm finally in a place where I feel comfortable and I feel happy with who I am. And I finally understood that there is no I I never should have ever even thought of any competing with anyone because I'm here to represent communities that were underrepresented. And that's it. Like that is my only job. So. Is it frustrating though? And that feels like a lot of frustration. That feels yes. like a lot of different communities you have to represent, but also that clash. Because yeah. there's also like that unspoken but spoken negativity from the Mexican community to the queer community. You, you know? want you want to hand me a shot? <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. No? Look, wait, let's, let's fucking down a mimosa together. First of all, Cheers. I'm on keto, so I can't. What? I'd rather take a shot. What keto? You look bomb. You're good. Thank You're you. fine. No, but You're wearing a sweater show. anyways. <laughs> it's my I birthday. Show December 3rd. Just take one gulp and that's oh it. Oh, my God. All one right. If I get we'll my heart get, races we'll... and I go to the hospital. Cheers. <laughs> That was a mal record. That was a sip. That wasn't a chug. Yeah. That was a pinche <laughs> <laughs> heart attack. Ahorita. Right. Talk to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Um. Yeah. No. You know. Yeah. I think you are more, and that's why I, uh, you and I have spoken in the in the past yeah. about I wanted to do an in depth thing. If I if I was gonna do an in depth sit like interview sit yeah. down like real sh- thing, I feel like Letty and I'm not. I'm really not just kissing your ass, bro. Like I think you it can would kiss be it you. too, though. I'm down. Uh, Pause. <laughs> Listen. Cheers. <laughs> I've heard. (laughs) (laughs) That's why she's hugging me so much. If you hear about me, let me tell you something right now. Internet. Yelp reviews. (laughs) Yelp reviews. What's my Yelp reviews? (laughs) Five stars. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. Um, You didn't even finish this. No, look. Sorry, you kind of And I have Salvi, so hurry up. Come on. Let's go. All right, there we go. Okay, we're talking. Just the... the, Just the... like the contradiction of, and of course, it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. You represent so many different communities, and you're down to do that. Yeah, it's hard. It's frustrating yeah. to represent Mexican Americans, Mexicans, but also the queer community because mm-hmm. each have different, yeah, and I some guess, have beef perceptions of yeah. each other within each other. Mm-hmm. Like you know, we like especially me, like I'm coming from Mexican American, but you know, Mexican, like traditional mm-hmm. Mexican upbringing, Catholic, of the whole nine, right? Like right. the whole real traditional thing. You already know that you're gonna have to deal with machista and whatever. And even like for example, my brother, my brother's very like you know progressive, forward thinking, smart man, but he right. be having certain little things that Nuts. I'm just like, bro, come on, dude, come on, like how are you gonna say that? Same thing even with me right. in the lesbian community. There's a lot of times when 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 you become you know like the more masculine presenting or whatever you end up adopting those machista ways so it's Ooh. like bro the same thing you were the just gender roles yeah. all exactly yeah, yeah, now sorry. now it's a different beast because now you're a girl that's actually disrespecting the you know and now it's like you're you're making it so much difficult more difficult to have that conversation so i think there's just all these little intricacies that you have to be mindful of and it is stressful and anxiety ridden but at the mm-hmm. end of the day um i'm trying to do my best in doing it because that kind of tells the whole story and yeah. i always tell people like whenever even when i mess up or when things happen if there's like a big blow up or something that i messed up um i'll just say more about that later but yeah. <laughs> um i'll be like bro this is gonna be great for the movie like when my selena Ooh. movie is when my selena movie is put out hopefully Who plays i'm still alive, know the bro. product in her fucking biopic i don't know bro but Honestly, when my Selena movie's out, it's going to be crazy because it's going to yeah. be like, you know, there's mad drama, lesbian yeah. stuff, an ex-husband, <laughs> a baby, stuff. mom like, stuff, you know, mom stuff. Did I get the formula In right? In the world. Did I breastfeed or did I not? No, I'm just joking. Uh, you know, just a lot of different. <laughs> Is there a random bunch of cholos chasing me because they're mad at me because I don't fit the yeah. description of yeah. what a Mexican-American girl <laughs> should be? Love snow. You know, it's like yeah. a bunch yeah. of fucking, a bunch of pelones behind me. And yeah. I'm just like, dude. ¿Qué pasó? Like, what's the yeah. problem? Why y'all mad at me? Mm-hmm. I've seen people take phone calls to say, I hate Snow the product. That's grown wow. Mexican American men sitting around taking calls of other grown men mm-hmm. saying, F Snow the product. Yep. And it's what? like, wow, bro, you sound like Hulk Hogan. And this mm-hmm. is weird. Why? Does that show you your power, though? 
does that trip you like that that also it doesn't yeah, come without threats like to threaten a man as a woman <laughs> doing what you're doing and i'm sure those guys that called are not random men it's 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 certain people whether it be position or power that you have know, said things. you know what it's it's scary and it's not scary because I think they're tough. It's scary because I think there's been a lot of legends and you know mm-hmm. that end up getting killed by yeah. Ooh, a so whack ass mm-hmm. random. nobody random mm-hmm. tweaker ass person. It's always some whack person that takes out a legend and when you really look at them side by side you go, "Dang, bro, like your only meaning in life was to take this person out." You're a pawn and you didn't even know it. You feel me? Yeah. So to me, knock on wood, it's scary because it's like, bro, I've said it in a song. Like, I'm a legend, but at the same time, I'd rather not be one if it takes me having to go. So I'd rather not. I'll yeah. I'll be at home be doing regular. boring stuff mm-hmm. with my kid, you know what I mean? If I'm making a little house out of popsicle sticks, that's totally way better than me. You know, I don't need the world to love me. I need my son to have a mom. Boom. We all got you here, though. Yeah. Thank you. We got your back. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you. And shout out to the little one. I always look at you and your son, and I think of me and my oldest. Mm-hmm. And it's so much of like, that's your ride or die. Mm-hmm. That's before anything is you and him. Oh, yeah. You know, there, there's so much going on in the world. But as he's getting older, you also have to you have to parent in a way. Again, you represent so many different communities. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure I'm sure dad's in the picture. I'm sure dad's family's in the picture. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of responsibility on you as being mom mm-hmm. to, te- to teach him how to be an ally. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And 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 there's been conversations that I've had to have that. Honestly, bro, like being a parent is so humbling because I could be out here and I could be podcasting or talking on stage and talking to people, right? Like I talk like at them, but then when I get met with a lesson in my own household that I'm like, Mm. bro, I didn't, I didn't raise my son to speak Spanish as well as I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, um, there's certain things about, you know, school or like him being a brown man or like, you know, like baby, you know, don't fight because he got in in a fight at school. And even though he was right, I'm like, the thing is that even though you were right in the argument and you won the fight, I'm like, he can come back at any moment and retaliate. Mm -hmm. And so now me, I went and took him out of school because I'm like, bro, there's so many reasons that people could be jealous of my son that now I have to like be careful. And sometimes it's like those decisions and those like real life things really shock you and like ground you into like the it doesn't my career is so irrelevant to like my real that life yeah. of, of like bro like our kids are going to teach us lessons that we weren't even ready like i could wake up on a tuesday and i wasn't ready for this lesson and yeah. here i am and i'm like that ep deadline can wait because what's going on here yeah. and that's my only job is raise that guy you yeah know? How do you see him looking at you? I know he knows who Snow the Product is. I know he knows. Both, again, he's in the household. He understands who you are. But he understands who he is, too, in the world. Oh, yeah. I think you make sure that he is, like he gets who his identity is yeah. in the world. Bro, we go toe-to-toe sometimes, and I feel like it's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm raising, like, I good luck to whoever's dealing with him in the future. Because, <laughs> because there's no way. The way, way. this kid is raised. Bro. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I have to be mindful of that too because it's like, bro, I be intimidating sometimes to grown men. And yeah. this is a 12-year-old that like I can talk to however I want depending on my mood. So I really have to calm myself down and make sure that I am in mom mode when I'm in the house because if I was to be in snow mode to my kid, I'm going to traumatize him, you know? Yeah. So it's like I really need to calm down and talk to him as a kid. But to be honest, bro, like, Sometimes I, I, it's it's really cool because it's like I I want to I want to be cool to my kid, yeah, but at yeah. the same time I'm I'm, I'm mom. we're never gonna be cool, dog. Right? We're never gonna <laughs> be fucking cool. You're gonna be like that was that. My that's oldest not loves like, K-pop. Boo. He doesn't care that I know J Cole and Kendrick right? and Snow. He's just right? like. I don't care. Do you know BTS? I'm dead. (laughs) But like, to me, my kid, like, you know, uh, I joke about it that Mm. obviously I'm the cooler parent. Right. But I really am. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I have cool things about my life. So like, for example, I did the McDonald's shoot or whatever and I I took him. Because I'm like, I'm like, uh, huh? (laughs) Slight flex. Little flex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, no, but real, like for real, I had to take him because to him, he's like, whoa, you're going to work with McDonald's. But he had to sit there through this whole photo shoot because he didn't have school. And it's like, we were there for like 15 hours and he has to watch like this isn't just fun right. this isn't just yeah. like cool this is work. work and even when you're bored when you're tired i'm like imagine mommy mommy's yep. changing mm-hmm. doing this doing that all this and i have to really explain so i think my son's tired of me turning every single cool thing into a life lesson but yeah. i do and that's why you have a ps5 because i went to mcdonald's <laughs> and i did this 15 hour shit <laughs> 
what? No, he has a PS5 because I got traumatized by Louis 13 at his studio. <laughs> That's Louis. What? Bro, Louis yeah. traumatized me so bad. He did a prank on me and I was crying and shaking. <laughs> and he felt so bad that he gave me a PS5 to take to my son. And yeah. then I was crying and shaking because I was walking. This is when what? you couldn't get him. Bro, this is when you couldn't get him. So I'm walking around downtown with a PS5, mad people oh, around. Yeah. And I'm like, somebody's going to rob me. All right, hold on. <laughs> Louis, you need to cut this out and post this because Louis the 13th, he's like the first person I ever saw do like pre rolls. Uh, I don't know if we can talk about this, oh. but he can, he did pre roll and he was just the bomb. Yeah. He, supplier, amazing. Oh, Shout out to Louis the 13th. Su- super dope. What mm-hmm. happened? What was the prank? Man, I feel dumb saying it. Say okay. it. <laughs> so. So he um he had this PSA. Anybody who's been to his, I feel like he's got a lot of people, and he said that after me, and I think he pranked one more person, and then he was like, no more girls, because we always worry about our kid. So it was like this like end of the world prank where it's like the TV went like, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's oh, this thing. Oh, is it the purge shit? No, it was, it was that there was a missile, that there was detected missiles were coming oh, or whatever. Oh. Any type of shit. Bro, but it, look, I was already, you know, obviously I don't have to explain what goes on in his studio. So right. everybody yeah. was a little lit, whatever. Mm-hmm. The, so I just see and this thing. And then the thing comes out on screen. Bro, and there's <laughs> 50 people all in the studio scared. Like everybody was in on it. So everybody's scared. Like, you know, everybody's like, yo, what are we going to do? All this stuff. And I'm calling my brother. And I'm like, yo, get baby Drew. Like, you know, get in the car. Like, y'all go. Like, it's too late for me. But y'all, I'm just so worried. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> Big moms. Just go. Just yeah. go. I'm like, take Save baby Drew. Drew. Right? I'm like, take him. There's money here. Grab this. Go. Like, you know, save yourselves. And then um, everybody just starts laughing. And then I was just, I was already in tears and I'm just crying. Yeah. And I just like, just balled up. And I was like, bro, I have a kid. Yeah. Like, you can't do that to me. Like, all I was thinking about was my son. So, yeah, he was like, bro. Yeah. I, was, I was leaving. Was I was like, joke. all right, then. And then he like, he's like, no. And I was like, what? He's like, take that. I was like. It was a joke. I, like, yeah. yeah, and then I took the PS5, and I was like, honestly, usually I'd be like, no, I won't. But I was like, bro, give, give me that right, right now. I was like, I'm taking this, because I hadn't bought my son one yet. So I was like, let's go. That sounds like the perfect opening to your December 3rd show. <laughs> <laughs> That's going down. Just, the world's <laughs> Look, talk bro, to me about no, this give show. Me that. No, give me give me what, uh, what is it, what, what segue you thought about in that. <laughs> go ahead, Letty. Give us the segue. Talk to me about this show. <laughs> it's going about, to... Before you go on, just telling everybody, hey, you know, warning, warning, warning. 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 Yeah. Fool's gone wild, warning. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have Where is this wild. fool going? <laughs> yeah. Like, and then you just open. Oh my gosh, so, we should ask me. Fool's gone wild to open the freaking show and there hey, should be like a warning let's go. and then no. I come little out. Little Mr. E. Yep. I come, come out with the, e. own, the fucking, the most important cholo ever is Little Mr. E. That's that part. it. This show is going down at the Novo. No, no, talk to me about it. It's coming up this weekend. You know that I am <laughs> tripping. Tell me what you told me on text. Tell me what you I told me on text. I'm not going to lie. This show, December 3rd, because I'm home, right? I live in yeah, LA, yeah. December 3rd. I was like, yeah, cake, piece of cake, whatever. And I've been so busy, nonstop, all year. I've been, like, personal and professionally, right. I've been mm-hmm. busy everywhere else, Work. right? And then I told her, I'm like, bro, I feel like a birthday just like crept up on me and I have nothing else to do but to go to Vallarta and just buy like 30 pounds of meat and just be like, here you go. Like, I, I don't love know it. What I love it. Somebody it works. Cooking. It works. It's going to happen. It. At this point, I feel so bad that the show crept up on me. Now, my, mind you, there's fans flying in from other places. People are booked. I literally am flying a fan in from New Zealand yeah. because she's wow. such a good fan this that I'm like, bro. This is their Christmas. I am bringing yeah. everyone and now I'm like, last minute. But Gaggle. then again, I have ADHD. So, uh-huh. like, last minute works good for me. Under pressure, I'm like, bro, I yeah. bet you there's even gonna be fireworks at this thing. <laughs> I work good under pressure. So right now I'm like, Letty, let's what go. What do I do? I'm on my way to Get IE and friends uh, podcast and we're gonna do some, you know, Amazing. TikToks and stuff. Brown bag. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna hit up all my LA homies. I'm gonna be like, worst case scenario, we're all gonna be on stage doing a carne asada yes. live. You can watch, maybe we'll invite a bunch of white people to watch like a bunch of Mexicans on stage just have a carne asada. Like, Mexican. This, yeah. is what we, this is what we act like. We can even have the cholos that hate me. We can have them pull up to the thing and we can like, you know, b- battle it out or right. something. You know, make it an exhibition. Yeah. Art, if anything else. I love but, it. You know, why awesome. not? It's happening December 3rd. It's happening this Saturday. You can get your tickets now. I just want to tell you right now, because my guy Greg C, he's a Padres fan. You're, yeah. I'm a Dodgers Padre? fan. Padre? You're Padres. from San Jose. Oh San, let San me Diego, know, which is crazy. Yeah. I'm not a let Padres me know fan. where you stand. Are you a Giants fan? Are I you think a- baseball is the absolute most boring sport oh, I've ever God. seen oh. in my life. Oh, 
and my son played baseball and I, did, and I was like <laughs> literally bro the only excitement was my son up to bat everything else I was like whose kids are these like what do I care about this no, ask them joking. kids <laughs> forget right? these kids no and I went no honestly I did go to Dodgers games um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my attorney shouts out Marjorie uh, she they have that box thing or whatever so we always oh, get to sweets. like do yeah those yeah. Oh, you know I get to be eating my food hot dogs he's got money you know? no I mean we out here but she she powerful Latinas yeah. out here, by the way. No, but um, I don't know. Y'all, y'all make your best. Uh, maybe you could recruit me. Just uh-huh. say fuck the Padre. Just say that. I mean, Dodgers. honestly, being from San Diego, that like part. too. Yeah. And the way San Diego treated me sometimes. No, I'll kick you out right how now. Let's say fuck the Dodgers. Fuck the Padre. Oh! <laughs> Right. So no, kidding. you're an honorary right. Dodger fan. You're an honorary Do- <laughs> Angelino. I'm telling you, we've adopted you. You're yeah, out yeah. here. You're you're actually in the in the trenches of Los Angeles. You're in the valley. I'm, yeah, I'm in the valley. I'm in the living realness. is something else. Catch me in Pacoima, Home Depot. <laughs> See? Catch me in the Pacoima, Home Depot. <laughs> Catch me in the 818. Um, I'd be at Costco eating pizza. If you see me over there and I look like absolute crap, please don't take a picture yeah. of me. Just, <laughs> just come up to me and then I can give you a voice note. But do not take a picture of me when I'm in the wild in the 818. In the cause, wild. Because I am a wild animal out there. It's a lie. Look, <laughs> by the way, uh, I, I, I do love. I don't that. live in Pacoima, by the way. Just so she you doesn't. Know. But shout out Pacoima. But shout out Pacoima. Richie Valley. Park, Silmar, <laughs> San, uh, San Fernando. Shouts out everybody, Sunland, Sun Valley, Shadow Hills, everywhere. Uh, where you, else? You um, do have a ranch, though. I yes, think I it's do. awesome because I my my grandparents always used to tell me, Letty, you're gonna go to Mexico for the summer. You're gonna be at El Rancho. Yeah, you have it in LA. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to Mexico for it. I don't. Is that? Tell me about just getting the ranch. Pff, are you kidding me? Do you know what buying four acres in LA Ooh. is like? First of all, the process. Yes. Second of all, like I didn't even think I could do it. I just know that, dude. If if I could let y'all know something, I'm not even a super like hippie person, but like manifesting is so real. Mm-hmm. I used to drive around all the ranches. I'm talking about from like north north to like all the way south south towards like Downey and stuff. I was like a Riverside. I was like somewhere. I'm gonna get a ranch. I want <laughs> land. You know what I mean? Um, because I do. I, I want to have a place yeah. to you know. Yeah. You can and take so, the bean out of Mexico, you, but you can't, can't take the Mexico out of the bean. I'm the, the bean is right here. <laughs> no, but real, real, real shit. And when I got it, it, it was it felt amazing. And then I was like, yo, now I got to pay for this. Yeah. Thing. You know what I mean? I yeah. was like, dang. But then, you know, thank God, um, I, I, it has a lot of plants. There's a lot of um, citrus and, like, uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff like mm-hmm. that that I'm, like, planning on, you know, like, doing their seven buildings so I could do everything from video production to my podcast to music to studio I to merch. You need to come by, by the way. I'm and, down. Um, I have goats and chickens and what? dogs and you know now I want to get a pig hopefully and I need to get I wanted to get a llama to take care of my goats but turns out <laughs> a lla- llama fu- take care yeah. of goats Where do you they find do because a, a coyote ate one of my goats while I was on tour and so oh, so now I have to have a, a llama take care of my goats but then llamas don't want to live alone they want a couple so then now I got to buy two llamas so now magically my expenses <laughs> just doubled and so the llamas are going to live with the goats and I, I love just, you Snow it's going to be great you should come by and check it out <laughs> Where do you, you find know? a llama? You know, <laughs> you know, so let, me tell you, let me tell you something, Letty. I have other things going for me than that five star that your friend told you about. <laughs> where do you get a llama? Yeah, where do you get a llama from? Shut up. I'm too <laughs> drunk for you to mention that right now. Where do you get a llama? How would you guys want to bet she's drunk enough right now that she's going to expose some things about herself? <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk to what? me about the llama. Mm. Where'd you get it? I haven't got it yet. Oh, yeah, no te emociones. To, todavía no, todavía no. Ahí viene, you know. So the llamas are coming, um, but and then a little pig, hopefully. But it's I'm just making sure everything's good. Yeah. But as of right now, everything I make, everything I do is straight out of my ranch, from the music to the music videos to the podcast to everything. Like I'm the merch, shipping right. the merch and making the merch. Everything is in my same place because that's my dream. You know, life work-life balance and realizing that at the end of the day it's really cool to be out there in the world or whatever but you know being home is like my favorite i'm a homebody i like that it's great i love it so we have a connection besides your ex (laughs) um we have a connection with my friend Charlemagne the God, he's your your friend too. Mm-hmm. He always told me, Letty, I can't wait till you guys connect. Yeah, and we always talked about you, and we talked to you, we talk about you in the same respect that we talk about Nip. Damn, because nobody does it like how you guys have done it. Whether it be the merch, whether it just it's just the movement before yeah. the music, absolutely. But the music supplements it. The music still is there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there has always been 
that that love and that respect. So shout out to Charlemagne for shout even just Charlemagne. pointing out that. Shout out Charlemagne also for being one of the first people to ever like co-sign me, mm-hmm. go out there and like argue about me yeah. type stuff. Like honestly, it took Charlemagne co-signing me to even get respect within my own community a yep. lot of times. So to me, it's like that's the reason that I get to stand on my own too and be like, bro, you're not about to tell me who I am from within my community because right. I'm like, bro, you would listen to other people before you would ever support someone in your same community. So at the end of the day, it's yeah. like, bro, come on. And that that dude didn't have to. Like he, I owe him a lot for that, and that's why he's in one of my my first EP, my only EP actually out yeah. besides this last one. Uh, Charlemagne, he. He been there. He's dope. Yeah. And I just feel like Loki, like it's just destiny happening right now of things that he's always told me about you Mm -hmm. and always bigged you up. Again, he didn't have to. He didn't. At all. Like he has a whole other landscape. He's popping out in the streets. His brackets are very different than our brackets. Right. But very much so like, you know, Snow is doing it. Everything that you hear about other people and everything that you hear about other like men doing, mm-hmm. Snow is doing on her own accord. She has a whole stockpile of merch. She has a whole stockpile of whether it be vlogs or podcasts Money, and music. Bitches. Yeah, I'll- <laughs> no, <I'm joking>. oh! <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but being able to make that empire before you really even reach the masses, and it's crazy that you haven't reached the masses. You're there already. And then, and again, I go back to the it being perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Do you see it? Are you aware of that happening right now? I don't, I, I can't see myself from the outside looking in. A lot of times it requires mm-hmm. having a conversation with people to be like, what yeah. does it look like? You know what I mean? Because yeah. to me, I'm, I'm, it's like, it's like going on a hike. Like uh-huh. I'm in the climb. I just keep seeing more mountain. I don't know mm-hmm. what, you know, and I can't look back because if I do look back, I mean, if I'm scared of heights, I'm going to get scared. So right. I really just got to keep on climbing and I got to keep on going. Um, and honestly, sometimes that might be why I, I, I want more and I'm like, oh, I got to keep going. And, and, and it, it takes those pauses and those breaks and those conversations with other yeah. with peers and with, you know, other human beings to be like, yo, that's why I do go back and hang out with like old friends that don't resent me over whatever the hell they their feelings are. But <laughs> there's a lot of friends that literally will be like, yo, like, you know, we had problems before, but because I didn't know how to adjust to your life but I'm so proud of you and I'm so happy for you and those conversations to me do more for me than like you know accolades or whatever like knowing that the people that mean so much to me throughout my life are proud of me like it just it's it, that's what really matters to me you know and yeah. speaking of which my mom's landing tonight i just got the news awesome. from my assistant so yo my mom's coming i'm excited i hope she tells me she's proud of me um yeah. because that's all i ever looked for and if she does then i quit i'm done I quit. <laughs> no don't say you're proud of snow yet keep her traumatized yeah no snow <laughs> no, it's it's an honor to have you it's so great to see you and i can't wait to see you hit the stage novo it's going down december 3rd Thank we're gonna you. be there whether you invite me or not Thank you can you. invite me now. No, of course I'm be, inviting you. Yeah, yeah. No, I would love to be there and to support you and to just be there with you. Of course, let's 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 do it. it I was, don't know if I should bring out a banda, a grupo, or a mariachi. All of it, oh, all of it. it. at the same time. Right? All of it. <laughs> well, people are gonna have to buy some tickets for me. Yeah. All that. You know, grupos and bandas are expensive. Yeah. Yes. Mariachis, <laughs> I'll be performing for like two hours. The mariachis will be like thirty five thousand yeah. no, dollars. Yeah. There's yeah. a there's a word. It's called zeitgeist, and it means like sign of the times. You are that. You're the sign of the times that right now everything that's supposed to happen for you is happening and it is you Dang. like you are like the the collision of all of these worlds coming together and being and representing what that is you know in, in hip-hop Bro. in latin trap in mm-hmm. papu urbano and all of that i'm mad you i'm mad you you let people not not let us be friends i need this friend you're talking to me all the <laughs> Every time day. Just, no, send Call me a you know. good morning text like you are the zeitgeist i'm like i'm out here i'm the sign of the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, sign of the times baby look that you're part. the reason i'm gonna treat girls different like, I'm gonna, like girl i am Zeitgeist. I'm a zeitgeist <laughs> shit. What are you, queen? I the paid, fuck? I paid for dinner and I'm a zeitgeist. No, I'm just joking. Look, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Thank you for coming by Power 106. Anytime we can, we're going to celebrate you. We're going to support you. Thank you. And I just want to shout out Greg C just for being someone to look at because she will not look at me. She just looks at you. I felt the connection. I felt the tension. You know, yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah, no, I couldn't look at you because I I don't want to get it. I love it. I love it. Snow the product. It's Power 106. (laughs) LA's number one for hip hop. Come on.